finances. Why should I care? So it's super fun to talk to your friends about politics and about things that you believe in and maybe your favorite show or your favorite performer or why or on the Tonys why that person rocked out the performance or why they didn't or on the Grammys judge if somebody lip syncs and then talk about why and so it's super fun to talk about things that you're knowledgeable about and then when the conversation turns to finances you just sit there because you don't know or you're too ashamed because you're in credit card debt or finances are just something that you don't talk about so let's address a few things here get knowledgeable it may not be the most interesting thing in the world but I've started doing stories or videos or whatever you want to call them with snapchat filters and Facebook filters just to make things interesting right if you're gonna listen to me drone on and on about 401ks like might as well do it with a snapchat filter with a buddy on my face so step one I'm gonna try to help you out there step two finances are super important because it's your life (laughs) you've always heard money doesn't buy you happiness yeah money doesn't buy you happiness but it sure buys you choices hmm if you have no choice but to go to your survival job and work a 12 hour day in a restaurant and miss an audition or go to an audition, the thing you moved to the city for, hmm, what choice would you rather have? And money allows you to make that choice. So sure, money doesn't buy you happiness, but money sure buys you that option to do what you want to do and what you moved to the city to do. Now, You may be in your 20s and you may be loving the fact that you can brag about that you're living with three people and your rent is $700 a month. And you should be living with three people, by the way. Like, you should be, because I'm not going to get started on living by yourself and paying an absorbent amount of rent for a nice apartment when you shouldn't be. So don't go, don't make me go there. But... You know, it might be fun to complain about, oh, I'm the starving actor, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's fun to talk about it, but then when you meet someone who you want to be in a relationship with, and maybe they're not in the business, or even if they are in the business, and it gets to the point in the relationship where you're getting really serious, and you want to talk finances, it is just not cute when you tell someone that you are in massive credit card debt and you have school loans and you don't know how much money is coming in and is going out each month like yeah that's just not cute you're gonna get into a point with the relationship where you're gonna want to disclose financial stuff if you're smart about the relationship so get your life together get your financial life together and be knowledgeable god willing we're all gonna get to retirement age someday And you don't want to be dependent on Social Security because heaven knows if it's even going to be there or not. And if it is going to be there, might be like five cents a month, which will buy nothing by the time we retire. So don't depend upon government handouts. I know it's fun to depend upon unemployment right now after you get off a gig. But the older you get, the more you realize how much money you need to be saving for a substantial future. And when you get into a relationship and you want to have kids and buy a house and think about life things, you think about actually how much money those things take. You know, I know how much money it is for me as a single person to like deal. And now I know how much money it is for me as a married person with kids and diapers and food and a mortgage. And there are certain responsibilities that you have. And If I would have made some better choices in my 20s, if I would have worked five survival jobs, if I would have known about survival jobs, that's why I started the school survival jobs for actors because I didn't know about survival jobs when I moved to the city. I moved to the city and auditioned and I didn't know any better. And I learned through experience and that's what I want to share with you because I want you to make the best choices in your 20s as possible to set your life up for success. I want you in your 20s to put $2,000 a year into a retirement account, a Roth IRA, 
and you are going to look at me like I have four heads when I say that I want you to put $2,000 into a retirement account because that's what I would have done when I was 22 if you would have told me I needed an extra $2,000 a year for retirement. If you put $2,000 a year in a retirement account, age 25, age 26, age 27, age 28, all the way up to 35, right? And you just let it sit there. If you wait until you are 35 and put $2,000 in the account, 135, 2136, 2137, 2138, and you continue that until you're 65, you still will not have as much money in your account compared to if you would have done the $2,000 every year when you were 25 to 35. And think if you start even earlier, like if you start 21, 22, that is something called the beauty of compound interest. Now I'm assuming you're making 10% each year and in investments and we can get into all of that, but I'm just trying to implore you to invest and get financially savvy and get financially knowledgeable now, even though it is so not on the top of your mind. Because the decisions you make now can affect you for the rest of your life. Well, obviously you know that, but the financial decisions now, because of time, are extra important. All right, so we talked about relationships, we talked about debt, we talked about sounding cool in front of friends so you know what you're talking about. I want to get into another aspect of relationships. So I've known a couple people in the business who were married to their high school sweetheart or their college sweetheart, and they didn't have to work survival jobs or they didn't have to work about, they didn't have to work a survival job and they didn't have to worry about money because they were quote unquote financed by their spouse. And that's lovely. But a couple relationships that I know of no longer exist. So, like, I know if you're married now, you think you're never going to get a divorce. It happened. Life happened. You never know. And I don't want to be negative, Nancy. But you might get divorced from that financial support. And then what are you going to do? You know, you need to build up your own account. You need to be financially savvy. You need to know these terms. You need to know what 401ks are and why you should always take the match and what an IRA is, what a money market account is, how much you need in savings for emergencies. Like These are things that you need to know. And if your spouse takes care of them right now, like you you can't rely on that because you never know what happens in relationships. And even worse... Some people might stay in non-healthy relationships just because they're being supported financially. And that is just awful. If there is a relationship that you are in that you should not be in, it is not healthy for you physically, emotionally, get out. Get out. And some people don't because they can't support themselves or their career financially. And I don't want that to be you. Okay? move on so financial savvy is pretty cool like when you start talking about oh the money that you're making and investing I mean it may not seem super cool to bring your lunch to an all-day audition when everybody's like running out to subway down the street or going to ABP to grab a little sandwich or soup or something but you know in your heart and in your mind and on your spreadsheet or your notebook or wherever you keep track of finances that you are doing something beautiful for your future so if you are able to do that kudos to you and it might sound really scary but I think learning is the first step so that's what I'm here for I want to know what questions you have I want to enable you I want to empower you to have a fantastic financial future. I want you to be secure. I want you to be happy. I want you to have options, right? Money doesn't buy happiness, but it sure buys you options. So thank you for listening. Please send me your questions and I will talk to you later. Bye.
Hey, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you have another couple minutes, I would absolutely love if you could be so kind to give me a review in iTunes. Pop on over there. In the app, they actually changed it so you can just scroll down and write a review. Let me know what you think and let me know who you think should listen to it and what topics you're interested in hearing about and we totally appreciate it. Thanks so much. Bye.